For reference, I'm a 23-year-old female. The story took place when I was 17 years old and home alone, when my parents took a trip out of the US to Toronto, Ontario. We lived there for three years for my father's job when I was a child, so they were visiting old friends that they had made when we lived there. My older brother was out of state in college at the time, so I was alone for the week. It was a Friday night, and one of my good guy friends was supposed to spend the night with Lee so that I wasn't alone for the weekend. Something came up and he had to return home for the night, leaving me home alone. I wasn't worried or nervous at all because I've been staying home alone since I was 12 years old. And as I got older, I'd spent several nights alone. My friend ended up leaving at around 10 that night. I texted my mom letting her know that he had to leave and that I'd be alone for the night now. She told me it was fine, but to just be careful and make sure the alarm was on. So I got ready for bed and I decided to sleep in my parents' bedroom because they had a huge TV in their room with cable access, which I didn't have in my room. I turned the house alarm on, got in bed, and started looking for a movie on cable to watch. My dog was lying on the bed with me, so I knew she couldn't have done anything to cause what happened next. About an hour had passed, and I was flipping through the channels when my house alarm suddenly went off. I immediately looked at the alarm unit by the bedroom door and saw the red light was flashing on and off. I froze. It was a very loud and repetitive beeping sound. I think it took me about 15 seconds just to process what was happening. Did the alarm just go off by itself? I thought, there's no way a door opened. Immediately, I started thinking of anyone and everyone I knew that could have possibly opened. One of the doors to my house with a key. You know, since all of the doors were locked, I knew my brother wasn't coming home for the weekend. I knew it wasn't my friend who had recently left because I just received a text saying he was home. I went through all of my friends that I could think of, and every single one of them was either out of town or busy. I knew none of my neighbors would have opened any of the doors either. I went through all of this in my head in that 15 seconds that I was frozen on the bed. Finally, I snapped out of it and I ran to my parents' bedroom door, closed it, and then locked it. I refrained from turning the alarm off because I knew that it automatically calls the police once it it's one minute of going off, and I was also thinking the loud alarm would scare away whoever just broke into my house. After I locked the door, I went to my mom's night table and took out a revolver that she kept in there just in case of emergencies like this one. Now I'm only about 5'4", and I knew that if anyone came through that door had the intention of hurting me, they would have easily succeeded. I wasn't taking any chances. I took out the gun, made sure it was loaded, and took the safety off. I held the gun up and I pointed it at the door, but I kept my finger off the trigger as you're supposed to do until you know for a fact you're going to shoot. I couldn't believe that I was holding a gun and pointing it at something and possibly someone with the intention to shoot if they proved to be dangerous. I sat there mentally preparing myself to shoot whoever managed to get through the door. This is something I never thought I'd have to do. I remained calm and I didn't let my emotions or fear get the better of me. I knew I needed to stay quiet and keep my head clear in case something actually happened. I was kneeling on the floor in this position for what felt like forever, but I'm sure only about two minutes truly passed. The alarm was still going off, and I decided that I would call 911 just in case the alarm system malfunctioned and didn't call the police. I dialed 911, explained to them everything that was going on, and they sent two police officers. My way. The dispatcher stayed on the phone with me until the cops got there. They checked the exterior perimeter of my house before knocking on the front door. I turned off the alarm and then put the gun away. I opened the front door and talked to the officers. They told me they found no sign of a break-in on the outside of the house. They asked me a few questions about what happened and I explained everything to them. They again asked me if I wanted to do a sweep of the interior of the house just to see if anyone had broken in and possibly hid somewhere. Looking back, I cannot believe how stupid my answer was. No, I think it's okay now. The cops assured me they would remain in the area and they told me not to hesitate to call back if anything else happened. I walked them out, locked the door behind them, and went back into my parents' room. I made sure my dog wasn't spooked at anything that happened, being that she's a 20 pound, cocker spaniel and not exactly the guard dog type. I then proceeded to finally call my parents and tell them what happened. My mom has always been an extremely calm person, so she didn't panic and I guess I have to thank her for my calm attitude during all of this, because I'm a lot like her in that sense. My dad, however, was very clearly worried about me, being that I was his young daughter. 
home alone. They asked me if I was okay and if I wanted them to come home early. I told them that wasn't necessary and I'm sure nothing like that would happen again since the alarm probably scared them off. I hung up the phone with my parents and I realized that I hadn't turned the alarm back on, so I went to the alarm system, entered the code, and pushed it. Nothing happened. It wasn't turning back on. I was confused at first, but then I realized the alarm doesn't turn on unless every door in the house is completely shut. My heart dropped. Shit, I muttered out loud. I had the realization that I had to now go around the house and look for what door had been opened and set the alarm off in the first place. This is when I truly realized how stupid I was to tell the police no when they asked if I wanted them to search the interior of the house. I went back in my mom's night table and picked up the gun, again mentally preparing for the worst. I then went to every door in the ground level of my house, holding the gun in both of my hands. I finally made it to the hallway where the door entering our garage was, and it was there that I saw that had been left wide open. Chills went through my body at the thought that someone had actually tried to break in, and it succeeded. Now we had two ground level windows in our garage, so someone coming through there to get into the house was not far fetched. I turned the light on in the garage and held the gun in front of me. I looked at the two windows in the garage, and there didn't seem to be any sign that they were opened. I immediately shut the door to the garage, locked it, and tried turning the alarm on again. It worked this time. After this, I went through the entirety of the house with the gun in hand to check if anyone had hidden anywhere. I prayed the entire time that I wouldn't find anyone and that I really wouldn't have to use that gun, and to my relief, I found nothing and no one. I slept with my parents' bedroom door locked that night, and with the revolver under my pillow for the rest of the week. When my parents returned home from the trip, my father inspected the windows in the garage to see if they had been forced open or anything like that. As I figured, there was no evidence of a forced entry. My parents concluded that the door to the garage must have not been shut all the way, and a gust of wind came from outside through the garage and then swung the door to the house open, causing the alarm to go off. We never figured out what actually happened that night. Since then, I have had one more experience with a possible break-in when I was in college, and I came home for the weekend. That story wasn't as scary, but I was alone again and my parents were doing the same thing during the first time visiting friends in Canada. I'm now 23 years old. Six years have passed since that night and whatever it was, whatever truly happened, well, it continues to be the scariest night of my life. I can't even bring myself to imagine what would have happened if we didn't have that alarm system and if I didn't have my mom's gun to feel safer. Although nothing bad ended up actually happening, I advise everyone hearing this story to always make sure your home has an alarm and to always, always keep a gun in the home to protect yourself. When I was 17, I had the extreme misfortune of breaking both of my legs at the same time. I had been playing football with some of my friends out behind my house in a wide open field. There was a barn that had been abandoned and was slowly rotting away. The way the barn was built, it was nestled right onto the side of the hill. So you could walk around the far end of the barn, climb up the hill and walk onto the roof. I was being a bit of a dick during the game and I deliberately ran through what we had marked as out of bounds and ran up the hill and across the barn roof, intending to leap down off of it and score a bogus touchdown. But due to the rain, the wooden roof beams were wet and soggy, and when the wood gave out under my feet, I crashed downwards through the ceiling and landed hard on some old farming instruments, including buckets, a set of horseshoes, and a spare tire for an old tractor. I'm actually pretty lucky that I didn't get impaled by a pitchfork or anything. To make a long story short, I broke both of my legs, dislocated my left arm, and had a concussion. I was rushed to the hospital and was discharged in a wheelchair where I was forced to stay on the ground floor of my house. One night my parents and sister decided that they wanted to go see the new Lord of the Rings, movie that was playing, and kind of without warning, they said they were leaving. I found myself in the house alone. At first I didn't mind. I had complete control of the TV and could play my video games as loud as I wanted to. But before long, I got frustrated. Most of my games were upstairs where I couldn't get them and couldn't reach the microwave or most of the higher cabinets from my wheelchair. So I was very limited on what I could do and I began to feel very bitter. I rolled myself into the dining room without turning on the lights and peeked out into the backyard, out across the field and into the barn. I'm not sure why I wanted to look back there. It was dark out and there wasn't much to see, but I'm the type of drive who always has to be 
aware of his surroundings in order for my mind to be at peace. I looked out at the stars for a few moments and was about to roll myself backwards and return to the kitchen when I saw something. By the light of the moon, I saw two figures walk out of the barn to make their way towards my house. I froze too nervous to even let the curtain fall back in place. I made myself stare back towards the approaching figures. They weren't just walking, they were holding hands. I remember speaking out loud, are those kids? I felt most of the fear melt away and was replaced by rage. Who were these brats trespassing on our property at 9 o'clock at night? We lived in a pretty secluded area and it would have taken quite a lot of walking through the woods in the dark to enter our backyard from that direction. That's when I made my first mistake. I opened the window and called out to them. Hey, what are you doing? Both figures immediately stopped in their tracks still holding hands, but otherwise keeping completely still. Get out of our yard, I called out. There was perhaps five seconds of silence before one of them called out in a voice so calm it made all the terror and fear come rushing back. Can we come in? The voice sounded muffled, and at this point my eyes had adjusted to the darkness. Now that I had a better look at them, I could tell that they weren't kids. I would say that they were probably teenagers wearing white porcelain masks that had these sadistic, painted smiles on them. My response died in my throat and my hands began to shake. I slammed the window shut and wheeled myself fast back across the dining room and into the living room. I shut off the TV and lights casting the house into darkness and rolled into the den. I got out of my wheelchair and crawled across the floor to the window and peeked out. They were both at the same spot, still holding hands, still staring right at the house. I watched them for a few more seconds and then one of them raised their hand and waved at me. Not in the general direction of the house right at me. I ducked back and started freaking out and cursing. I hadn't turned on any lights. There was no way they could have seen half of my face peeking out at them from the distance in the dark. I had no idea what to do, and I didn't know if all the doors were locked, if the garage door was shut, or even when my family would be back home. I felt completely helpless, knowing that I didn't have the strength or ability to check every room in the house to make sure it was locked up tight. I went to the phone on my desk and frantically called my mom's phone, but her cell was off. She was likely in the movie. Same thing with my dad. I thought about calling the cops, but I didn't know exactly what to tell them. Sure, there was two people trespassing on my property, but they hadn't threatened me or attempted to break in yet. I didn't know how to put into words the sense of urgency and danger. I felt. I crawled back to my wheelchair and rolled myself through the darkness and into the hallway that separated the living room and kitchen. That's when I heard a knock at the door and I heard a muffled voice ask, can we come in? I turned away from the front door and made my way towards the stairs, intending to climb them. On my hands and knees, crawled to my room and locked myself in there. My front door had a strip of narrow windows turning vertically down along the door frame, and when I was nearly at the stairs, a masked face appeared through one of the windows and shortly after I heard giggling. Upon making eye contact with the mask, the person crooked their head to the side. I froze like a deer in the headlights. All I could do was stare back. I remember it so perfectly. As I'm typing this, my hands are shaking. The mask disappeared from view, and that's when I noticed the deadbolt to the front door was unlocked. All anyone had to do was turn the knob, and they could walk right in. Then there was a knock on the back door and another small muffled voice. I could barely hear what it said because of the sound of my heart pounding in my ears. I shut my eyes and buried my face into my hands. I heard rattling coming from the back door. I'm not very religious, but in that moment I prayed to whoever would listen. I'm not sure how long I sat there crying and waiting for one of the doors to open, but after what felt like 10 minutes I looked up. There was no one peeking through the window at me. I slid out of my chair, crawled slowly to the stairs and into my room where I shut the door and locked it. I'm not positive about this last part, but right before I shut the door I glanced down in the dark hallway and I thought I saw the shadowy outline of a dark figure slowly tiptoeing up the stairs. I locked the door and proceeded to suffer through the longest night of my life. I never heard anything else from either inside the house or outside. My parents and sister arrived after 1am, and by that time my shirt was soaked through with sweat. They thought by the look on my face I had suffered a stroke or something and nearly called an ambulance for me. I never saw these masked people again. Of course my parents didn't believe me. Why would they? There was no evidence that someone had broken in. 
it was just much easier for them to conclude that I just had a nightmare. My legs have since healed and even though I still walk with a slight limp, there was otherwise no permanent damage. If I had to choose though, I would rather break both of my legs again, just to avoid the feeling of helplessness and terror that I felt that night when I looked into the hollow black eyes of that porcelain mask. My name is Angelo and I'm 16. Around three months ago, my parents left me alone due to them heading to a wedding. I live with my family and dogs, Coco, Marshall, Skye, and Rubble. Marshall and Skye are pit bulls, so I had nothing to fear if someone broke in. A couple of hours after my parents left, I let Marshall and Skye outside to do their business. I heard barking outside and I went to check on them when I saw a woman who was around 5'5 five five and in her late 30s standing on the other side of the fence looking at my dogs. You have such beautiful dogs. Can I pet them? The woman said to me, I was about three feet away from the fence, but I could smell cigarettes coming off her clothes. Sorry, they don't really like being pet, but thanks for the compliment. I said to the woman while hurrying my dogs inside. She then gave me this glare, a glare that still haunts me to this day. My dogs were inside. I made sure the doors were locked and I checked that the woman was gone. When I didn't see, her, I rushed all of my dogs to a room that was the farthest away from the backyard door. I texted my mom that there was a strange woman outside trying to pet our dogs. Now I forgot to mention, there's apartments right next to our neighborhood and we had a fair share of people stopping and looking at our dogs, but something about this woman made me and my dogs feel really unnerved. My mom said that they wouldn't be heading home anytime soon, but to be safe. A few minutes later, I had heard the doorbell and all of the dogs went crazy. My bedroom is fairly large, but all of the dogs moving around was crazy. I decided not to bother to see who was outside and to just stay with the dogs. Me and the dogs were watching a movie, but I then heard clicks in my window. I paused the movie, and I was starting to freak out internally, wondering if it was that same lady trying to break in, and then I heard a loud crash. I mustered up the courage to look out the window. I pulled back the curtains, and what I saw was shocking. I saw that same woman breaking into my neighbor's house. I quickly closed the curtains and called 911 on the phone. I stayed quiet as to not alert the woman. The operator said that the police would get there in about two minutes, but I then heard a shriek coming from my neighbor's house. I looked out my window and I saw my neighbor attacking the woman who was in screaming at the top of her lungs. I was still on the phone and I had told the operator that my neighbor was fighting against the woman. By now, the police got there and they had to taser the woman for how violent she was. She was spouting swears that would make a sailor blush and she was moving, uncontrollably. The police took a knife and would look to be a gun away from the lady. She started to say that she was going to kill me and my dogs and burn my house down. I think she was high and thought that my neighbor's house was mine due to how similar the houses looked. I was stunned, looking out my window while the thought of what that woman would do to me. And my dogs as she got me. I then started to cry, holding my dogs close to me. I didn't know what to do, so I kind of just sat there until I fell asleep. I had heard my parents opening my door, saying they were home. I didn't know what to say, but I then told them to talk to the neighbors next to us. Days went by, and now they insist that I can't stay home alone anymore. I can't get the image of her glare out of my head, and I now sleep with both of my pit bulls just to feel safe. I know I'll be safe now but knowing what that woman was capable of doing just scares me. If that woman didn't break into my neighbor's house and broke into mine instead, I just know me and my dogs would be dead. Stay safe out there.